So what are union types? Unions describe one of many options. So a union type is a type made from at least two types and represents any values of those types. So let's explain this on our log Pokemon example we've seen before. So you can say log Pokemon, and then you're going to have an argument Pokemon. Then we can say string, array of strings, or this is the operator for the union, string. So this says that Pokemon can only be an array of strings or a string. But what you might not know is that you can only do things with the union type that every member supports. So for example, if you go ahead and say Pokemon to uppercase, I think this is how it's spelled. Let me just make sure that we are not making syntax errors. Yeah, so it's to uppercase. So if we hover over it, the property to uppercase does not exist on type string or string of arrays. And this is because we have to narrow down the type because TypeScript doesn't know the type or isn't sure of it, right? So it's warning us. So yeah, so we can do this same as before, but before we do that, for example, arrays and string have some of the same methods. So we can say Pokemon slice, and this is perfectly acceptable. So yeah, so let's narrow down the type like we did it before. So you can just say if array is array, right? Oh, Pokemon. Yeah, and then we can say Pokemon map Pokemon and we get great type inference because if we hover over Pokemon it's a string and then we can say Pokemon to uppercase and that's really awesome. So we need to do the last check which is if type of Pokemon if it's a string then we're just going to say Pokemon to uppercase and everything works as expected. Next we're going to learn about discriminated unions. So this may sound complicated and all this fancy terminology right but it's really just something simple. So a discriminated union is the result of narrowing the members of the union that have the same literal type. So for example we can use a type guard to narrow the Pokemon type fire or water to fire or water. <laughs> and we're going to see how this works in the next example. But for this to work, we need to enable strict type checking and strict type checking is something you're going to use in every project because otherwise most of the errors are going to be just a suggestion, but you want your app to fail if you don't meet the type requirements or whatever. But of course you can control this. So how can we do this? We can do this by adding a simple tsconfig file and that's a configuration file for the TypeScript compiler. So we don't need to install TypeScript or anything. VS Code is just going to pick up this config. So we can just say new file, tsconfig, JSON. And we're going to create an object. And look at this awesome auto completion. <laughs> How crazy is this? Compiler options. And then we can turn strict on. So strict, let's just say it's false. So if we go here and if I remove this type, this is just going to be a suggestion, right? So we can see Pokemon any. And let me just open the terminal so I can say CD TypeScript. And if I run this, so remember TS, what was TS node, right? Yeah, index. This should be fine because there are no errors, right? But if we turn strict to true, and then we see we should get an error here. And if your TypeScript uh, server is confused, you can press Control P in your editor, use the arrow so we can get to the commands and then you can say restart TypeScript server. So you don't have to restart your editor, etc. And this is also a great pro tip when you have some weird issues, right? Because maybe the TypeScript server isn't updating properly. Uh, so when we run this, this should throw us an error, which we won't, right? We don't want to ship this to production in this state. And this is awesome. So it's going to catch the error and you have to fix it, right? Yeah, so let me just close this. And let's talk about discriminated unions, right? So we can delete this. Let me just close this file. And here I have an interface, Pokemon. We're going to have some attacks. <laughs> I'm making things up at this point. Flamethrower, which is going to be optional. So we're describing the function, right? Same as before. We're going to have Whirlpool. <laughs> I don't even know if this is a real, don't quote me, please. If you're a Pokemon fan, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pokemon type, we can have fire or water. So again, here is some union. And then we can have a function, function Pokemon attack. We're going to have an argument, let me just say Pokemon, Pokemon. And then let's use a switch statement. So we're going to say Pokemon, Pokemon type. And we can say in case if it's fire, we can say, let me just, Pokemon flamethrower. And we should get an 
warning or error from TypeScript because it really has no idea if this is possible. Cannot invoke an object which is possibly undefined. And it's possibly undefined because it's really optional. And you only get this check if you have strict on, right? And then let's add another one. So you can say case water. You can say Pokemon Whirlpool. And then we can break it. So let's also add this. So you can say Pokemon attack, and we can give it an object, say Pokemon type. See this awesome auto completion. Yeah, more auto completion. Yeah, so you can say da -da -da. console load. Let me just copy this over. Oops, let's go into a string. And then let's just copy this over one more time. So you can say Pokemon water console log whirlpool. Yeah, let me just copy this R. There we go. So we can see the same error, but... So let's reiterate. So the type checker can determine if flamethrower or whirlpool is present based on the Pokemon type property because they could not exist as they're both optional. So how do we solve this problem? So to solve this problem, we have to be more explicit and separate the arguments so TypeScript can be sure of the type. So here is how we do it in this example. And the rest of our code is the same, but now TypeScript isn't going to complain. So we can just remove this and we can say interface fire. So we just split them up. Flame thrower. Say void. Say Pokemon type fire. And then let's make another one. Interface water. Whirlpool. Let's say void, Pokemon type, going to be water. And now we can combine them using a union. So again, going back full circle. So we can say Pokemon, fire or water. And now TypeScript is going to be able to determine what methods does it have available, right? So if we look at here, Pokemon is of type fire. How awesome is this? Like, this is just crazy to me. <laughs> this is so awesome. I love TypeScript. Look at this Pokemon water. Oh my God. This is so awesome. And let's see, what is it complaining about? Flamethrower. So look at this. So we made a mistake I wasn't even aware of. And look at the power of TypeScript. This is so awesome, man. Just look at this. We can just remove this. Press control space bar for completion. Let's see. Uh, I think we can. Yeah, Whirlpool. How awesome is this, man? I just love this. So for completion, let's just even run it. So you can say TS note and this should work. Flamethrower, Whirlpool. How awesome is this? All right, catch you in the next one.